Okay. Camera shoot. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, so I'm not sure what sequence of the videos, once they load on the YouTube, how they're going to play out. Hopefully this one loads after the last one that went up, or as mentioned, the sixth sense or intuition from the Aboriginal gentleman who was uh, generous enough to email in his experiences, right, and speak of the intuition. And on that note, um, you know, I told you about taking that conservation course with those predator experts a couple weeks ago in Salmon Arm, British Columbia. Oh my God, the, the knowledge those guys had and shared with me was absolutely, I was like taken back from some of the things they shared. And But one of the main points I want to share with you was um, the fact that these guys proven that when it comes to live trapping wolves, which are the most intelligent animal out of the game animals, the predator animals in North America, they are so intelligent, it is absolutely unbelievable. And I'm going to give you an example of the intelligence that I know of for certain, after reading and watching and learning myself, is this will might help you this might help you understand how other beings can possibly have these skills, but even far more advanced, right? I mean, if a wolf can have this skill, there's no telling who or what can have that skill plus, okay? Now, listen to this. You know, there was some wildlife biologists in Alaska slash trappers who were studying three different packs of wolves in a national park in Alaska, and these wolves were not trapped, killed, shot, hunted in any way. Now, what they said was, and now, just so you know, all packs of wolves have their natural boundaries. They have their zone, okay? And the number one killer of wolves is wolves, and those are the alphas. The alphas always die in battles with other rival wolf packs. What happens is a rival wolf pack will probably think they're big and strong enough. Now they're going to go into that zone over there, challenge that pack, and they get into a battle. And they said that it's 100% of the time the alphas are killed. And then the packs take off, separate again, and go back to their home turfs and carry on. That's what they do. But the point that I'm getting across to you, what they mentioned was with the wolves was, and they had radio collars on them, these wolves, some of them were up to 25 miles plus deep into their territory. And they said that when that other radio collared pack of wolves crossed that borderline, whether it be a ridge, a mountain ridge, a high land, or a creek, or a lake, whatever that natural border of that wolf pack is, the moment that that pack crossed the line, that pack would spin and bolt to the direction of those wolves that, are, that were trespassing in their zone. How do you explain that one? How did that pack of wolves know that some other wolves crossed that imaginary border of theirs into their zone? And they did this numerous times. How amazing is that? You know, when a lot of you question how anything could could avoid us so easily so often oh my god the deer just got up right there and it was right behind me and i don't have a camera to videotape it crazy um looks like a buck too anyway um but that is an amazing fact of life okay how do you explain that now um these men that were putting on this course what they also told me was sorry i just got to get a look at this deer it's got to line it up. It's had enough of listening to me. It's moving up and away, and it is a buck. Cool. I'll be. I'll look. I'll find him later on for sure. I'll leave a camera for him. Huh? Sorry. So, anyways, that's actually what I'm here for, right? So, um, another fact is with the wolves, and these guys are setting live traps that don't hurt them. It just holds on them. If they said flat out, if you aren't right in the mind. If you're in the, in the right space of thought, train of thought, when you're about to set that trap for those wolves, they know it, and they won't go near it. And they've proved this numerous times. You know, and at that, at that time as well, one guy had actually spoke up and mentioned, he was not from Alberta, he was a very experienced wolf trapper. And he said that a few years ago, he was going through a bad time of life, and he was like hung over all the time, and hitting the alcohol and crap, and he never caught a wolf right he's just off in his, in his head but the wolves knew it something was he was leaving something on the ground his presence whatever it is 
and these wolves were aware of it. They were aware of him, aware to avoid everywhere I went, and he never caught a wolf. And, uh, I mean, I've been pursuing, uh, attempting to manage our wolf populations in certain areas where I, where I can, when I can, for probably 14 years, I think, and I've learned a lot about them. But it's not about the trapping or conservation practices we have today when it comes to dealing with predators and wildlife. What the topic, what I'm trying to get at to you today is, is there is some things going on up there with wildlife alone where they possess some sort of an intuition, a power connection where they know what's going on, which is unexplainable but easily proven. They've proven it, right? So I hope you understand what I'm trying to get at, what I'm sharing this knowledge. And then, uh, again, I had a, a book given to me, and like the previous gentleman, the Aboriginal man, said about the, the engaging in war, is never look at your, your adversary, your enemy. Never look at them, no matter how far away, because you will enable them to become aware that they are, that they are being observed. Right? That's no mistake. That's a, that's a proven fact. Now, how do you describe that skill, that power that we all have? And... Why are we not taught at a young age to, to enhance that power, that enhance that power, that skill that we have? Why aren't we? I think we all should be. I firmly, strongly believe that our gut instincts are very, very important. They're very important, and it's a skill we all have, and it's a skill that we are not taught to enhance and get in tune with. And it's unfortunate. It's like I said earlier, I, if, if I could just encourage anyone who's a parent to teach their children about our sixth sense and intuition and help them get in tune with it and they will they will their lives will be enhanced from that without a doubt i'm going to give you an example of how we are more in in tune when we're children with these skills our natural skills we all have and i'm going to use uh, my mother's second husband as an example now at my young age i wasn't exposed to any bad people or anything bad carefree you know, run around at night in the streets with your friends playing street hockey stuff, come home when it's dark. And uh, we never really had to worry about too much grief, right? We never warned about bad people as children. Uh, we more or less had to learn as we went uh, by trial and error, I guess. But what I'm getting at is with the sixth sense intuition, I remember when I was a young boy, in the very first time that I was physically in the presence of this, my mother's second husband, Oh, I, I still vividly remember that moment. Every single hair in my body turned to wire. I felt absolutely alarmed and threatened with this with this person, this man. And I'd never, I didn't even know there was bad adults at that age. I didn't know. I didn't know anything. But I do remember that. My natural intuition, my gut instincts were telling me that this being was absolutely evil and had ill intentions. <clears throat> and... At that time, you know, I didn't have anybody telling us about it. I didn't know about intuition or our sixth sense. And what I know now, and after surviving and seeing the incredible damage that being did to my family, including my grandparents, especially my mother and her family as a whole, if I'd have known then what the possibilities of allowing this dark person to be in our space, what that would result in, I would have fought to the death at that time to make sure I eliminated that threat to my family. If I'd have known then, if somebody had clued me into our sixth sense or somebody in my family, do, do, you want to see, do you see what I'm getting at? This is how important it is for our sixth sense or intuition in us. We need to be aware of it at a very young age because we are more, we're more pure at that time. You know, we're more easily, I, I, don't, know how, how, I don't know how to go about to teach children to enhance those intuition skills at this time. I'm definitely looking into it more and more and more. I mean, you probably notice I talk about it more and more on my videos. I have been relying on my sixth sense and being aware of it for many years now, and I'm, I'm pretty sure, well, I know that is attributes to why I went 20 years, 100%, 100% success in my big game guiding hunts, um, without a doubt, because I was, I allow, for many years now, I allow my gut to make 100% of my uh, choices across the board with everything and anything We're coming right down to what knot I should use on a hook or who I should trust who I should speak to who, where I should go um, what patch of timber I should go into today or not go in there today and I've been relying on my instincts for those decisions for many years now and I am winning across the board 
okay? And uh, that, that skill can apply to your children as they grow up, to their first job, their employers, what they should do with their life, people they should, they should trust, people they should befriend, decisions they should do, which could have an effect on their future. And especially if we're going to live rurally or spend a lot of time in, in the mountains, in the forests, we need to be in tune with these skills. It's very, very vital. It's very important, okay? I hope I'm making sense. I know I'm babbling like a bit of a dork right now, but um, maybe I will eventually want to have more time. I can maybe write down my thoughts and make, make it a little more clear, make more sense of it, to relate to all of you, to share with all of you, to encourage all of you to focus on your intuition, your gut instincts, to ensure that you make the right cho choices in life and survive and become aware of darkness when it's present in your space and know exactly where it is. Okay, because there's there's actually wildlife that uses those skills daily. They just do, and there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to too. But we just need more and more people to speak of it and teach it and enhance it. All right. Now, let me see what I have here to share out of the emails, and then I'm gonna get moving because I'm about to be late and I gotta get home. <laughs> I got so much. To, you know the you know what I'm gonna say. I got so much to do. Okay, what's this one? I've got probably 400 in my notes alone from two months of looking at my emails. My name is Tracy Canada and use my name. It was the 94 rail hunting season and a friend of mine and his son went to Strip Peak area near Lost Lake, Northern Idaho. We split up at Lost Lake Trailhead. My friend went over to the Lost Lake Lookout and I took a spur road. My grandfather always takes seven steps, stop, look and listen. Seven, is, I take three. <laughs> anyway, there was ice crystals everywhere and there had been mud, so movement was slow. I picked up my way, I picked my way up the road. I'd maybe gone about a half mile when I spotted what I thought was a bear. I had a bear tag, so I slipped my Remington 7mm mag off safe. Out from behind a windfall that was broken off at about eight foot, steps a big foot that probably stood nine feet tall. His shoulders were half again as wide as mine. I'm 6'1", 360 pounds. My shoulders are 30 inches wide. This guy appeared to have his head sat on his shoulders. His head was two feet long, heavy brow. I was 15 yards from him. I could see that his hair was black and his eyes were amber color. He had a squarish jaw. His chest was flat, much like a great ape. His hair was about like a lab, in good shape, sleek, shiny, and very black. This guy was huge compared to me. I would guess 800 pounds. I was standing there looking at him, and he was looking at me, maybe 45 seconds. 45 seconds in the wild is like an hour. That's a ridiculous chunk of time. I got this feeling that he was like my brother, and I wouldn't shoot my brother, and I shouldn't shoot him. Message? Feeling? I don't know. He turned and was gone in a flash and without a sound. Use my name? I don't know. Hmm. Well, what do you say to that? Short, straight to the point, and that's what he saw. Thousands of other people have seen the exact same thing. So, <clears throat> these experiences are not going to stop. 